our previous lecture we were discussing about uh, uh, the some of the important aspects of low Reynolds number hydrodynamics and we started with analyzing the continuity equation. So, uh, to summarize what we observed uh, during our analysis let us uh, look into the slides. So, we made an assumption that uh, the flow is two dimensional and constant density flow and uh, the continuity equation revealed a relationship between the velocity scales with the corresponding length scales. So, we made an important comment that the length scale if the vertical direction is the y direction then the length scale along y is h, but the length scale along x it may be the total length of the channel or it may be even less than that depending on whether there are characteristic changes taking place over shorter distances. Like for example, if the channel surface is patterned with a particular weightability then it is possible that x reference the reference length scale along x is much much less than uh, the total axial span of the channel. With uh, this background let us now move on to the board to discuss about the corresponding implications for the momentum equation. So, uh, let us write so let us consider the physical problem in hand. So, there is a channel like this you have x axis laid in this direction y axis laid in this direction. So, x momentum equation del u del t plus u del u del x plus v del u del y with a row is equal to minus del p del x plus mu As obvious I am not repeating again that we are making an assumption that the flow is incompressible. So, that uh, you know the additional term source term due to the compressibility effect is not appearing here. Now, uh, let us make an assumption that it is a steady flow. We will discuss in details about some unsteady flows. So, first let us consider that it is a steady flow. So, example steady flow. So, the steady flow will have del u del t equal to 0, then we consider the orders of magnitude of various other terms. So, this term is not there for steady flow, but let us consider the other two terms. So, rho u reference square by x reference that is the order of magnitude of this term. What is the order of magnitude of this term? rho v reference into u reference by y reference. Now, v reference is related to u reference through the continuity equation. So, let us write it once more the continuity equation. So, 
our analysis revealed that this is of the order of u reference by x reference. I am not committing whether x reference is equal to the length of the channel or not because we discussed that it depends on the physical situation on hand and this is of the order of v reference by y reference. So, v reference is of the order of u reference into y reference by x reference. So, that means this term is also of the order of rho u reference square by x reference right. So, if this term is important this term is also equally important until and unless v is identically 0 and this is something which is not very intuitive because intuition says that v is much much less than u if y reference is much much less than x reference despite that v del u del y is of comparable order as that of u del u del x because although v is much much less than u if x y reference is much much less than x reference still del u del y may be much much greater than del u del x the gradient in the y direction is likely to be much sharper or steeper as compared to the gradient in the x direction that makes up for the fact that p may be much much less than u. So, the product u del u del x and v del u del y they are coming out to be of comparable order. Let us uh, now look into the viscous term, the pressure gradient term we will consider separately. Let us consider the viscous term. So, the viscous term what is the order of this term? Mu u reference by x reference square and this term is of the order of mu u reference by y reference square. If y reference is much much less than x reference again I am telling that this is not always true, but this is true in many cases when there is no pattern of slip or pattern of weightability along the axial direction of the channel then you can say safely that y reference is much much less than x reference. So, if y reference is much much less than x reference then this term will dominate over the other okay. So, you can see then then this term is going to be the deciding factor as compared to the other term look into the similarity between this and the boundary layer theory. In boundary layer theory you have the boundary layer thickness delta much much less than L. So, there the delta is a naturally evolving length scale, here the y reference may be governed by the confinement height of the channel, the micro channel confinement can decide or can dictate what is y reference. But although scale wise the treatments are very similar, you have to understand very carefully that the boundary layer theory is valid for high Reynolds number whereas, here doing here we are doing a low Reynolds number hydrodynamics. So, physics is completely different although scale wise you can see that there is some analogy this has to be remembered very carefully that uh, this analysis is not what uh, we intend to do for boundary layer theory although scale wise they are appearing to be similar. So, now let us write the ratio of inertia by viscous. So, let us take an example with y reference equal to h, x reference equal to l which is much much greater than h. Let us say this is an example that we take. So, let us write what is the ratio of inertia force by viscous force. inertia force by viscous force. So, what is the inertia force? The left hand side is the inertia force. 
So, inertia force is of the order of rho u reference square by L. Now, we have taken an example with x reference equal to L and the viscous force mu u reference by h square. Uh, I am sorry that this is not visible in the board, I will write it at a separate place. So, write it here inertia force by viscous force is of the order of rho u reference square by L by mu u reference by h square. Okay. So, this is what rho u reference h by mu into h by L. Right. So, if h is the characteristic length scale of the channel, this is the Reynolds number based on h. So, you can see that the ratio of inertia force by viscous force is the Reynolds number into h by L. So, one very important and interesting observation is that if the Reynolds number is small, h by L we have already committed as small then the inertia force can be neglected as compared to the viscous force. So, the left hand side of the Navier Stokes equation becomes irrelevant. So, then that equation is called as Stokes equation. Stokes equation is Navier Stokes equation with the inertial terms equal to 0, I mean approximately 0, not identically equal to 0, but approximately equal to 0 or neglected that is called as Stokes equation. So, then when you have the Reynolds number relatively high, you can see that then also it may be possible that inertia force is negligible as compared to viscous force, because the Reynolds number may be relatively high not too high, but h by L is small. So, the product of Reynolds number and h by L is important. This is the very important take home message that it is not the Reynolds number that we are bothered just about but it is the product of Reynolds number and h by L. So, even if the Reynolds number is not too small, but the product of Reynolds number and h by L that is small, then this effect is that the inertia force may be negligible as compared to the viscous forces. So, then what is our equation that we are left with? We are left with the Stokes equation. Let me write that. Of course, it can include other body forces, but here we are discussing mainly pressure driven flow. So, I have not included any other body force. So, you have 0 approximately equal to I have purposefully written both of the viscous terms because it might so happen that they are equally strong. But still the left hand side can be omitted if the inertial force is negligible as compared to the viscous force. So, for the example that we have talked the special form of the Stokes equation boils down to because this term is negligible for that example. What about the y momentum equation? What about the y momentum equation? For the y momentum equation, you can make similar analysis and write
okay. Similar, just replace u with v. Now the question is out of these two terms, which term is more dominating? So to do that, let us write what is the order of del square v del y square. What is that? This is of the order of v reference by h square and order of del square u del y square is of the order of u reference by h square. If v reference is much much less than u reference which is true if x reference if y reference is much much less than x reference then this term is much much less than del square u del y square this is u. So now apply a logic you have these two equations now in this equation the pressure gradient term is being balanced by the viscous term. In this equation also the pressure gradient term is being balanced by the viscous term, but the viscous term in the second equation is much much less than the viscous term in the first equation. Therefore the pressure gradient term in the second equation must be much much less than pressure gradient term in the first equation. So this analysis implicates that del p del y is much much less than del p del x. If that is so, if that is so then you can write del p del x approximately as d p d x. Okay. I am writing it again because this part of the board is not visible. So del p del x is approximately equal to d p d x. So then we are left with this equation where this can be replaced by dp dx approximately. Okay. So in low Reynolds number hydrodynamics we get an equation if y reference is much much less, less than x reference we get an equation which remarkably resembles with fully developed flow that is why we discussed with fully developed flow to begin with. So now the question is where is the similarity and where is the dissimilarity. So let us write the equation. So we will divide the board into two parts in one part we will write the low Reynolds number equation on other side we will write the fully developed flow equation and that will help us to compare. So we assume that the physical problem on hand is flow through a channel two dimensional situation. So fully developed flow we had del u del x is equal to 0 and 0 is equal to minus d p d x plus mu d 2 u d y 2 right.
लो रेनॉल्स नंबर फ्लो दिस इज फुल्ली डेवलप फ्लो दिस इज लो रेनॉल्स नंबर फ्लो लो रेनॉल्स नंबर फ्लो डजेंट रिक्वायर डेल यू डेल एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो राइट सो लो रेनॉल्स नंबर स्टिल यू विल हैव डेल यू डेल एक्स प्लस डेल बी डेल वाई इक्वल टू जीरो सो इन फुल्ली डेवलप्ड फ्लो इफ देर आर नो होल्स इन द वॉल्स देन दैट विल मीन वी इक्वल टू जीरो आइडेंटिकली बट लो रेनॉल्स नंबर फ्लो डजेंट रिक्वायर वी इज आइडेंटिकली इक्वल टू जीरो राइट सो v may be small as compared to u if length scale along y is much small as compared to length scale along x but if the length scales are comparable u and v may be comparable on the other hand when you have no holes on the wall of the channel then for fully developed flow v is identically equal to zero no question of any approximation much much less or close to this kind of approximation nothing is required not only that the x momentum equation this is approximately equal to right although while solving problems we will not write always approximately equal to we will assume that as equal to just in the casual spirit of solving the problem but fundamentally it is approximately equal to because the inertial term is negligible as compared to the viscous term but the inertial term is not identically equal to zero for fully developed flow the inertial term is identically equal to zero not only that you see that this in place of del p del x we had written dp dx here for fully developed flow that is an exact behavior that is an exact condition on the other hand here in place of del p del x we had written dp dx that is an approximate consideration by comparing the terms in the x momentum with the terms in the y momentum equation finally here you can see that these are partial derivatives whereas this is ordinary derivative why these are partial derivatives because now u is a function of both x and y because u del u del x is not equal to 0 identically not identically equal to 0 so u is a function of both x and y so this is a partial derivative whereas this is an ordinary derivative many times however see these are small intricate tidbits but these tidbits are important in the conceptual paradigm but for somebody who is just interested for solving a problem maybe there is no great difference between this equation and this equation so that is why we have worked out some problems related to fully developed flow that can give you a glimpse of how to solve related problems on low Reynolds number flow need not be necessarily fully developed. So uh, we had uh, made this discussion which is uh, sort of like a comparison between low Reynolds number flow and fully developed flow. Let us now summarize these dis discussions uh, as we go to the slides. Yes, this is dp dx, right? This is dp dx, yes. Now, let us uh, go to the slides. So, uh, I mean, uh, because of some version in the version problem in the computer, what you are seeing here as square box is basically of the order of tilde so that has not come properly in the version of the powerpoint used in this computer so that uh, but assume that i uh, like uh, well tilde has come tilde has come properly what has not come is much much less so much much less has not come so 
uh, y reference much much less than x reference. So, this much much less thing has come as a box in the slides. So, just take that as much much less. So, h is much much less than l. So, v reference is much much less as compared to u reference. So, we have performed an order of magnitude analysis of the momentum equation x momentum equation and have found out that the inertial term by viscous term is of the order of Reynolds number into h by l. So, there are two cases for which the inertial term can be neglected as compared to the viscous term. We have discussed all this, but uh, every time what I am trying to do is that after discussing something we are trying to pause for a moment and summarize what we have discussed. So, that uh, it, it becomes easier for you to digest the material. So, if Reynolds number is small or h by l is very small, if h by l is very small in that case even if Reynolds number is large small h by l makes the product small. So, I will tell you like when you say large small uh, I mean what are the typical th typical scenarios. Let us say h is of the order of micron and l is of the order of millimeter. Okay. So, 10 to the power minus 6 by 10 to the power minus 3. Okay. So, 10 to the power minus 3 is the ratio of h by l. So, even if the Reynolds number is of the order of 100, you can see that the inertial term by viscous term can be 100 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, inertial term may be one order less as compared to the viscous term. So, even with 100 Reynolds number, see 100 is not a very small Reynolds number, but still you can have inertial term much negligible as compared to the viscous term. So, uh, to generalize here in the slides we have uh, written uh, the forms of the final forms of the x momentum equation uh, with a body force term B x, uh, which uh, in the board when we were working it out we neglected that body force term. And then uh, in the y momentum equation uh, sorry in the x momentum equation we can uh, we neglected uh, mu del 2 u del x 2 term as compared to mu del 2 u del y 2 term. Then uh, because mu u reference by l square is uh, much much less than mu u reference by h square. So, similar analysis we did for the y momentum equation and uh, then the y momentum equation has also yielded the same form as that of the x momentum equation. We have detailed in the board how uh, that is possible. And then by comparing the corresponding terms, we figured out that del p del, del y is much much less than del p del x. So, that we can write in place of del p del x, we can write d p d x. So, if we do that, then the system of equations for low Reynolds number flow uh, comes out to be del u del x plus del v del y equal to 0 and 0 is approximately equal to minus del p del x which is again equal to d p d x approximately equal to d p d x plus mu del 2 u del y 2. Finally, we discussed about the difference between low Reynolds number hydrodynamics and hydrodynamically fully developed flow. So, for low Reynolds number flows the left hand side the inertial terms are approximately equal to 0 that is negligible. On the other hand for hydrodynamically fully developed flow the inertial terms are identically equal to 0, no question of any approximation is there. So, that not only that if there are no holes in the walls of the channel then for fully developed flow that means that V is identically equal to 0 whereas for low Reynolds number flow V is not identically equal to 0 it may be uh, it may be lower than lower in order as compared to u depending on what is length scale along x and length scale along y. Okay. 
Now, let us come to the board again and uh, discuss a little bit about the time scales. So far, for order of magnitude analysis, we have considered steady flows, but let us consider examples of unsteady flows. So, when you have unsteady flows, then you write the equation, let us write the left hand side, anyway we begin with the full equation first because that will explain the context. Now, if it is an unsteady problem, there is one term in this equation which must be important. What is that term? The del u del t term, right? Because unsteadiness means the velocity field at a given point is expected to change with time, then only the unsteadiness comes. So, obviously, this term is important. Now, this term is associated with a time scale. So, we can write the order of magnitude of this term as rho u reference by t reference. Question is what is this t reference? Physically what is that characteristic time scale? It is the characteristic time over which characteristic changes in velocity occur within the flow field. Okay. So, now the question is that what is that characteristic time? What is that characteristic time over which characteristic changes will take place? So, now it depends on this see this term is always important, but out of the remaining terms some of the terms may be dominating over the other. So, based on that so, you may have a time scale which is based on this, scaling of this with this, you may have a time scale based on a scaling of this with this, that is if these two are comparable that means this is the, this is dictating the important physics or you can have a time scale based on this. Let me discuss it in a more elaborate manner. So, if you look into the forcing parameters here you have an advection term, you have a pressure gradient term and you have a diffusion term. Let us say that the advection effect is in creating the unsteadiness is much more as compared to other effects. So, if the advection effect is much more important then what happens then this term is of the same order of magnitude as this term, because other terms are of less order of magnitude. Then the time scale that you get is called as advection based time scale. So, what is the order of magnitude of this term? Rho u reference square by x reference. So, advection based time scale. when you have rho u reference by t reference is of the order of rho u reference square by x reference. Okay. So, what is t reference?
x reference by u reference. So, what is this t physically? Physically it is the time required for the perturbation to get advected by a distance x reference. If v is the velocity then the time required by the perturbation to traverse the distance x by advection is simply x by u, but that is due to advection only. We next compare, we next consider so advection time scale. So, this is what it is, we will discuss about three different time scales, one which highlights the contribution of this term, the other which we will do now is that highlights the contribution of this term and the third which highlights the contribution of this term. Assuming that this term is always important. Now, what is the correct time scale of a problem depends on the physics of the problem that out of these forcing parameters which one is governing the physics. There may be situations which are little bit tricky situations when you cannot rule out the effect of one as compared to the other and then you have to really like critically discuss that whether the time scale would be advection dominated or vis viscosity dominated or so to say diffusion dominated time scale. So, what is the diffusion dominated time scale or diffusion based time scale? So, diffusion based time scale is that the situation when the unsteady term scales with the diffusion term. So, what is the order of magnitude of the diffusion term assuming x reference much much greater than y reference. So, this is of the order of mu u reference by y reference square. So, diffusion time scale is governed by rho u reference by t reference is of the order of mu u reference by y reference square. So, t reference is of the order of y reference square by nu, nu is mu by rho the kinematic viscosity. So, you can see that the kinematic viscosity for a physical problem is very very important and we should discuss very carefully about its physical implication. See, it is a ratio of viscosity by density. So, viscosity is what? Viscosity talks about that there is a disturbance in momentum, how fast does it propagate within a fluid. So, if there is a wall, if there is a solid boundary that creates a disturbance in momentum. So, that disturbance in, mo in momentum is diffused within the fluid by virtue of the fluid property viscosity. On the other hand, fluid has the ability to sustain its momentum. See, the fluid which is flowing further away from the wall that is disturbed because of the viscous effect, but that also tends to retain its own momentum because of what? Because of its inertia and that inertia is related to the density because it is related to the mass. So, the denominator rho represents its ability to sustain its momentum, whereas the numerator mu 
represents the ability to create a disturbance in the momentum. So, it is the basically the sustenance of the disturbance in the momentum relative to the sustenance of the momentum that is important not just the disturbance in the momentum itself that is where the kinematic viscosity comes into the picture. So, you can see that this T reference. So, if for example, if y reference is equal to h then this is called as the diffusion based time scale h square by nu. So, what it is this time this T reference is the time required by the momentum disturbance to diffuse by a distance h that is the physical meaning of this characteristic time that is if you allow the disturbance to propagate then the characteristic time that it takes to traverse to diffuse is h square by nu. Now, there may be physical problems where the time scale is not governed by either the advection term or the diffusion term, but the time scale is governed by the pressure gradient term which is itself pulsating in nature. So, let us consider an example. del p del x is equal to some a 0 plus a 1 sin omega t. Okay. So, we are applying a we will work out a problem of this type and see that what is the velocity field as a consequence of this kind of pulsating flow that is very important for many microfluidic devices and this kind of devices can be used as a flow meter as a pulsating flow meter that means you can measure the flow rate as a function of time using many such devices. So, these have important applications in microfluidics. So, when you have a pulsating pressure gradient when you have a pulsating pressure gradient then you must have this term always important because otherwise there is no use of giving the pulsating pressure gradient right. If you are giving a pulsating pulsatile pressure gradient and you want that to be physically effective in a problem then that means the pulsating term has to be important. So, the pulsating term if it is important that means we can say that the corresponding time scale is nothing but 1 by omega right. You have to keep in mind that the scale is then decided by the frequency, frequency of pulsation. Okay. So, to summarize the scale may be decided by an advection based phenomenon a diffusion based phenomenon or a time dependent forcing parameter that is what is summarized in this slide. So, time scales you have advection based time scale if x reference is of the order of L it is T reference is L by U reference diffusion based time scale it is h square by nu or depending on the forcing parameter T reference is equal to 1 by omega. So, you have to decide that which is which scale is governing the physics. Okay. Now, we will consider some examples of low Reynolds number flows. We will consider only one example of steady flow and we will establish that the solution of the problem is quite similar to fully developed flow and then we will consider some examples of unsteady flows which uh, are not normally covered in the undergraduate level fluid mechanics course. So, we will first start with the uh, steady low Reynolds number flow as an example. An example 
of steady low Reynolds number flow. So, let us consider that you have x axis like this, y axis like this, h is the half height of the channel So, let us write the governing differential equation. Assuming x reference equal to L and y reference equal to h or 2 h whatever I mean scale wise there is no difference between h and 2 h. So, now let us call it dp dx although you may keep it generically as del p del x. Uh, uh, but let us call it as dp dx. So, now you integrate this equation, when you integrate this equation what you will get del u del y integrate means integrate with respect to y. plus what plus a function of x this is no more a constant for fully developed flow this was a constant right for a general low Reynolds number flow whether it is fully developed or not we do not care this is because with respect to integration with respect to y or differentiation with respect to y a function of x is like a constant. Okay. So, if we integrate it once more right you have c2 as another function of x now you have to evaluate c1 and c2 so what are the boundary conditions one of the boundary conditions at y is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 is the center line del u del y equal to 0. Can you tell or talk about a condition when this may not be true? Just give a give an example, give a practical example when at y equal to 0 del u del y equal to 0 is not true. let us say both the plates are stationary, both the plates are stationary, it is a channel where both the plates are stationary. Let us say that the weightability of the two channels, the weightability of the two channels they have different characteristics. So, that the hydrodynamic boundary condition we will discuss about slip boundary condition later on, but uh, just as a qualitative remark 
the hydrodynamic boundary condition is not symmetrical at the upper plate and the lower plate. If the hydrodynamic boundary conditions are not symmetrical at the upper plate and the lower plate, then at the center line the situation will not be symmetrical. Okay. And then in fact, we, you cannot solve half the problem. Here we are able to solve for half of the domain with an understanding that there is symmetry. Always remember in a physical problem, the symmetry demands two things. One is symmetry in geometry, another symmetry in physics. So, these two must be there in tandem. Even if the hydrodynamic boundary conditions are different, you can still, this, still see that there is a symmetry in geometry, but that does not ensure that there is a symmetry in the problem. Symmetry in geometry is just a necessary condition, but it is not a sufficient condition. So, you also have to see that there is a symmetry in hydrodynamics at the two walls. So, if that is not the case, then this is not true. But if that be the case, uh, which is more often the case that we consider, then at y equal to 0, you have del u del y is equal to 0. So, what I am trying to do is that I am trying to give you a specific picture, but trying to also create a broad picture, which may not, which may deviate from the specific example. See, we can work out only one or two specific examples, but when you discuss about a theory, your understanding of the theory should be broad based, so that it can address problems beyond what we are discussing. So, at y equal to 0, you have del u del y equal to 0. Plates, if plates are of different weightability or weightability variations along the plate are different, then the hydrodynamics which is described by the slip length, we will discuss what is the slip length later on. I am not trying to, that is why I told that we are trying to give just a qualitative picture at the moment. I will discuss in details what is slip length and how does it come into the an analysis of solving equations and so on. But for the time being, we are assuming that at least it will, it can break the symmetry of the problem. Different weightabilities or different variations in weightability of the two plates can be a factor of symmetry breaking in the problem, despite the problem being geometrically similar. So, then you have at y is equal to 0, you have del u del y is equal to 0. So, at y is equal to 0, if you have del u del y equal to 0, then c 1 x is equal to 0, right. Maybe in general it is a function of x, but in this case not, right. So, it will literally be a function of x, if you have a slip length which is varying along x. So, uh, in this case you have c 1 x equal to 0. What is the other boundary condition? At y is equal to h, u is equal to 0, right. At y is equal to 0, du dy equal to 0, that means c 1 equal to 0. So, at y is equal to h, u equal to 0. So, if at y equal to h, u equal to 0, then you will have 0 is equal to 1 by mu dp dx h square by 2 plus c 2. Okay. But it could so happen that at y equal to h, u is a function of x. For example, at y equal to h, let us say that the channel is patterned with some substrates, whereas where on these shaded regions there is slip and there is a velocity of slip which is different from 0. I am just giving an arbitrary example, it is not absolutely arbitrary, you can make engineering devices using this principle, but arbitrary at least at this stage when we have not introduced the slip. So, uh, let us say that there is a slip velocity over these patches. Okay. So, let us say these patches are slip regions and 
no patches and no slip regions. That means at the wall you will have u as a function of x, then you will have the C2 as a function of x, which has really come to a constant if this does not vary along the wall. Okay. So, in general the C 1, C 2 are functions of x. Now, for the specific common problem that we address for that particular case you can see that this equation is coming exactly same as the fully developed flow equation. So, sometimes knowingly or unknowingly we mix up the low Reynolds number hydrodynamics with the fully developed flow and still get the same answer and same solution. There is nothing wrong with it provided those considerations are still valid. In this example those considerations are still valid, but if you make now this functions of the velocity at the wall as a function of x alternate slip and no slip as an example, then you will get this as a function of x. Not only that once you get u as a function of x you will get del u del x. If you once you have u as a function of x you can calculate del u del x that means from that you can calculate del v del y because del u del x plus del v del y is equal to 0. Then you can integrate that with respect to y to get the variation of v and if c1 or c1 or c2 or both are functions of x then there will be a v as a function of y. Otherwise also v is a function of y that we cannot bring out from this equation simply because of the fact that we have neglected the inertial terms. Otherwise we could have brought that out from this equation itself. But if C1, C2 are functions of x that becomes more explicit that bring that comes out from the analysis otherwise that comes out from the concept rather than the mathematical analysis. So, to summarize what we have discussed as an example of a steady flow let us uh, say that uh, like if uh, we consider the velocity profile after evaluation of C 1 and C 2 uh, we could get we could get the velocity as a function of y and the wall shear stress. So, uh, that means that if you are working with a case of a low Reynolds number flow where you do not have a breaking in symmetry or you do not have patterned slip at the wall then you can use equations which are almost or virtually same as the fully developed flow equations and then you can solve for those equations. Now, this is uh, so far as our discussion goes for steady flows, but there is an interesting paradigm that remains to be discussed for pressure driven flows which is unsteady flows. So, we will start with the discussion of unsteady flows in the context of uh, first the classical fluid dynamics and then specifically in the context of microfluidics uh, that we will do uh, starting from the next lecture. Thank you very much.